Hi there everyone, it is currently the 25th, December 2011. Yes, a very active day out here in the Western Pacific and Australia as we continue to watch Cyclone Grant here just spinning off the top end here just east-northeast of Darwin at this current location. This is actually looking at the visible imagery of the system and you can see over the past few hours it actually has intensified quite rapidly. A lot of uh, overshooting tops in the convection here and that's indicating really powerful thunderstorms and all that moisture going to be moving on shore with this system producing some localized flooding in the region actually the Bureau of Meteorology has put out cyclone warnings across most of the top end here due to this developing system and actually if we look at the warning from the Bureau see all these areas here in orange and actually more of a reddish color those are where the cyclone warnings are right now for this category one cyclone really where the most intense uh, winds are going to be is really just here just south of Croker Island down here towards the south this is where you're going to see those higher winds as that flow comes on shore with the forward momentum but this could waver from right to left here and that's actually one of the reasons why there's such a wide swath here on the cone of air is because the storm has been rather erratic actually in the past six hours it's drifted slowly towards the northeast vice the south but its general direction is moving off here towards the south but also there's continues to be cyclone watches here farther off towards the east and towards the south as well as the system is expected to continue to drift towards the southeast and if we go back to the satellite imagery you can see a lot of these overshooting tops actually in this IR water vapor differential. All these areas in the blues and purples really, actually, especially just off nor the Northern Territory here, well, those are those really intense areas of rainfalls that could be dropping above 100 millimeters for per every six hours as this moves on shore, producing those localized flooding. So it doesn't look like the bulk of the moisture has moved on shore just yet, but this definitely could be a dangerous situation if anybody's out in the open. And actually, a lot of people have already took preparations. I saw a report of over about a 100 people in a cyclone evacuation centers at this time along the northern portion there so definitely good news that people are getting prepared for this system but at this time though it is in favorable area for development actually if we go with this water vapor imagery you can see a lot of this moisture off towards the north being able to feed into the system and if we overlay this with a shear map about uh, about five to ten knots actually right over top of this system right now that's really conducive for wind shear you get them above about 15 to 20 knots if it's stated in the past it's kind of like you're blowing out a candle that candle will lean over and basically smither out all together and at this time it looks like there's no wind in the room so this really it could be conducive for further development now this is the radar out of Darwin you are seeing some banding a little bit off towards new northeast here it doesn't look like the bulk of the precipitation as I stated earlier has moved on shore across the area and if the storm does continue to slowly drift off towards the east you might actually be spared a little in the area due to drier inflow coming in from the south out of the uh, central interior here and with that it actually could produce a little bit clearer weather for Darwin itself but that if the storm does draft off off towards the east southeast at this time as I stated it is very erratic so definitely anybody up in this region needs to make preparations for this storm but that's where it's going right now now I mentioned the title here that it could affect Queensland in the long range here and actually, uh, just take a gander at this precipitation outlook for the past, or excuse me, precipitation pine cast for the past seven days. This is where the areas of heavy precipitation across the world are displayed. And see this entire area here? This is the monsoonal trough. Now, tropical systems naturally want to go to areas of least resistance, and it's likely going to track along this monsoonal trough, actually following out here behind tropical cyclone Athena. That's where this bulk of area of precipitation is located. So if we look at the model outlook with that in mind, and start on today where you see the system just off the Northern Territory here and we go into the next couple days by Monday and then into Tuesday it crosses the northern portion and heads into the Gulf of Carpentaria in this area wind shear is expected to be very low and also sea surface temperatures well above 30 degrees that means it's going to be really conductive for tropical cyclone development if that occurs it's likely going to push farther off towards the east across the tablelands and end up exiting the continent right between about Innisfil and Cooktown, possibly Cairns as well, so you could be seeing some heavy rainfall. But good news is that by the time it reaches this location, if it does, look at the uh, gradient here, really kind of lacking, but it could produce some heavy rainfall. And you remember a year ago, actually, in Brisbane there and farther off towards the north here as well, you had those flooding and devastating rains last year about this time of year. So definitely kind of makes people think about that. doesn't look like it would be nearly as bad as that. That was more of a continuous rain, but you could be seeing some heavy rains with this.
in the next couple of days by midweek and into the latter part of the week. And just here's another look at the model outlook. This is GFS on the in the Canadian model on the right. And what I want you to take from both of these is the pink area here in the Gulf. That means sea surface temperatures above 30 degrees, actually between 30 and 31 degrees Celsius. So it really conducive for tropical cyclone development. And also both of these uh, both of these models take the storm across the Great Divide, exiting right about in the same area about Cooktown to Cairns here in the long range. But that is all for right now, everybody. I hope you're all having a great Christmas out here. Please stay safe. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, I really do appreciate those feedbacks here. Uh, you can either post them on the YouTube channel or at westernpacificweather.com or just email me here at westpacweather at gmail.com. So please stay safe out there. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.